as a fashion designer i never dreamt ever that i would be writing because fashion is about another art form altogether when i came to goa what moved me very much was uh, apart from the environment uh, was how this goa that we knew as children uh, was kind of disappearing so i began to write articles in goa today uh, some of them very fiery but uh, the thing is i really enjoy the process of writing because i enjoy the process of reading i've also living in goa had the had the opportunity and the space to meet writers i mean um, it's only in a small place like goa where which becomes like a crossroads of the world where you suddenly would bump into people like an oran pamuk which i never dreamt would ever happen um and coming to goa writers i think um, what interested me most was this was a group of really uh, chilled out people to start with it wasn't some you know a uh, stuffy uh, intellectual writers who were going to like sit and pont- pontificate on all kind of writing that happens but rather it was a it was a kind of an encouraging group where open to criticism and i think this is what is great about the book when you look at uh, inside out the great thing is that it's this complete melange of viewpoints situations you know uh, some people who have nothing to do with uh, you know celebrity or famous writers it's this mix which i really love and i had this i had this idea that i was going to write about my story as an inspiration for for other goans who came from the same middle class background that i came from mm-hmm. um and that's how that's what i wrote about uh, me uh, you know going through the process of becoming a designer and what i did in my work to make it you know truly international and indian and goan all rolled in one so you know and we realized that we actually our database of talents was not just of writing we had talents in many other areas so you know cog started turning and i just thought we can do this and the discussion went on and then we were talking about goa at the time there was a lot of negative press about goa uh, in the media mm. there were events that were happening that none of us were very happy about that we felt were being portrayed in a way that wasn't necessarily true those discussions went on and we started talking about uh, different perspectives of seeing life in goa what it was like um for true goan what was a true goan these discussions went on and we came up with this name uh inside out to um Vivek Menezes who is who also introduced me to the group introduced me to the topic of uh, the inquisition in goa and uh, the bro- the the persecution of the jews during the inquisition in goa and uh, as a jew living in goa it immediately interested me fit me very much uh, so it became a very emotional subject for me there was about 2 years where i was completely obsessed with this topic of katerina de orta uh, and uh, the inquisition and um my grandmother uh, then passed away and one might probably can never recover from the loss of a grandmother especially a maternal grandmother as a woman because that's your it's your link to who you are and so i wanted to explore all of it in a short story and i did so why an anthology after all these years what anthology is you talking about <laughs> writing is a big ego trip you know actually you enjoy writing it's it's a kind of uh, the safest uh, public activity which is not a health hazard and uh, you can enjoy yourself doing it you can have fun doing it i think we have so much fun that we should be arrested as uh, to to quote someone else uh, you know in the national scheme of things we have about 80 90 000 books coming out every year but if you look at goa there are very few and we are a society which uh, doesn't write enough about itself that's my point of view there, there is a big queue of people who want to get published the only thing is that you know so uh, it you have you have need some quality filters there if someone proudly says i don't read any book and wants to write a book that is <laughs> that might be a little bit uh, unusual but uh, you know i think a lot of people have a story to tell every second goan considers himself, considers himself to be a historian I think um the the whole experience has been very exciting people have come up and it's sort of in a way a culmination of all our 
meetings and our efforts to write and to share and to and to bring out something concrete and beaut and it's beautifully brought out. And for me, being a, from the outside, I wanted to, this is a wonderful way of getting into the minds of of the place. You know, the way I would dream of it is being like a crucible of ideas. To what about world domination? <laughs> well, it's, uh, the way we are going, maybe we will. <laughs> Anthology because um, no anthology. <laughs> that's that's bird watching. Ah. Anthology because um, then one day, fine day, Vivek came over, and he said, "You have to contribute something." But I said, "Vivek, what can I contribute?" Because mine is more academic work, and he said, "Why don't you do an essay writing?" Uh, photo essay. So then I thought about it. What about photo? She says, write about yourself and your family, which I was not prepared to do. And then, uh, then I remember this, uh, this photo that I had, and uh, I'd been looking at it just a few days earlier. And uh, the people there were very much in my mind because I was very curious to know about more about them. And. Uh, that's what made me write this, this essay. I used to talk what my uncles used to talk or grandparents used to talk. Because they used to talk a lot about those uncles of theirs. So there are a lot of stories like this in every home. Of course, of course. Jose, it's very hard to be a writer in Goa. The conditions are difficult. We don't get enough respect. Uh, the circumstances of our lives are really not as easy as people like to think that they are. Just recently, for instance, today my servant went to the market. All the migrants had bought the limbus. You know, I'm drinking my Bloody Mary here without a limbu. You know, this is intolerable situation. I mean, in a place like Meghalaya, there might be a riot about it. I, I don't think we should take this st standing down, standing up, uh, Jose. There could be improvements. You know, I, again, my mind continually turns to people like. Chetan Bhagat and the kind of support he must have had in a place like IIT. Over here, you know, with the difficulties of life really weighing us down on a regular basis, I feel we need more solidarity of that type. And I really, you know, my heart yearns for it very deeply. So times are really difficult. Huh? Today you can see I'm a very stressed out man today. You know, the difficulty, it's weighing on my head. Goa writers, it's a, the plight of the Goan writer is not an easy one. You know, it may look like I'm having a good time here in the swimming pool, but you're hanging actually, out with my friends. You're actually starving, right? I'm crying inside, Jose. I'm crying inside. You know, this, this drink is not satisfactory to me. It is not satisfying my inner hunger, my inner hurt. Partly because the migrants have bought all the limbos, but also the hole, you know, only writers will understand. Is there a hole in your heart? There's a hole in my heart, you say. What, what can be done about it? And really, I feel that people in other states, people who have all the advantages of the world, like, you know, Chetan Bhagat. Well, uh, why did I write a short story? I think there are lots of short stories in a lot of us and lots of short stories in me, lots of stories and things that one has seen happening and, and one cannot, uh, the nuances cannot be brought out in, in the, through writing news features or in the, in the uh, you know, uh, by being a journalistic, writing a journalistic piece. So when one writes a, a short story, I think brings out so much more one is able to talk about society, about, uh, you know, about uh, about belief systems, about traditions, about how traditions impinge on people. I think it's a good book because it's a, it's a fantastic compilation of, it's a fantastic compilation of uh, different stories from different people and many of them have told their personal stories. And these are reflective of the, of the multicultural society that Goa is now. So many of the writers have told their own story. 
they have come out with their own memoirs of sorts. Yeah, almost three or four of them are very yes. auto autobiographical and uh, in, a, in the tone of a memoir. But other short stories have probably been like, for example, any story, Mebius and uh, Fever and uh, uh, ah. Himanshu's story, Blood <laughs> story. and Savia's story, Petticoat Pride. Maybe some of them are our reflections uh, or, or our projections of uh, what we would uh, think about Goa and what we envision Goa to be. We have projected that onto a story, whereas other writers, other members have written their own story. But they are all stories. What do you think, Annie? Don't you think? Don't you agree? Absolutely. I think that's absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> and it was very much a personal journey. Yeah, but some were other stories and some were their own stories. It's only after I retired and I joined Goa Writers that I really got on to writing. Do you have some plans ahead? Do you want to uh, write a book or something? Yeah, kind of short story? I have plans to write a book, an anthology of stories of people who lived in Africa, born people who lived in Africa. Yes, I plan to write a sequel to it about my, my traveling to Goa by boat and by train. And then later on, how I lived in Goa, the, the concepts I had about Goa and how they changed when I arrived here. I like to read thrillers. Okay. Read. Yeah. James R.D. Chase? Not James R.D. Chase, that's passe now. <laughs> she's not, she's all rusty now. And, but I don't drive anymore these days uh, because uh, the traffic is just too much and when you got a son and your mother you think more responsible so I don't want to take the risk to drive a motorbike in this country now and I'm only on the road with my car so I mean I, I'm missing to drive the motorbike because I really like to drive it but as I said the traffic is just too much And I mean, the engine is excellent. There's nothing, uh, they don't make engines like this anymore. One of the things I really liked about this, uh, about Inside Out, was that Can I take it, my it was produced, yeah, sure. Oh. Yeah, it was uh, produced uh, by a group of uh, writers who just got together, who decided, okay, you will do the editing, you will do the, I will offer to do the design, I will do some something about the distribution. And Frederick said he, he will uh, co-publish it uh, by Goa 1556 and then someone else volunteers to help with the launch and it's all voluntary, it all comes together. I'm basically a short fiction writer. My short stories are based on my experience of thoughts, which get expression in uh, short fiction. Though I write in Konkani, because I find my expression the best when I write in Konkani.